YouTube, what's up? It's your boy Crypto J coming at you guys with yet another J Talks Crypto. If you ran into my channel, hit the subscribe button as well as the bell notification. I do my best each and every day to give you guys the top picks in cryptocurrency. Guys, nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. You kind of caught me slipping a little bit at the beginning of the video. Uh, but I wanted to give you guys an update video because, guys, guess what? Bitcoin coming close to now $90,000. Dollars and guess what guys I had to make a video because I'm concerned and I know that nobody's talking about being concerned right now everybody's just hugging it out super excited feeling the euphoria um, but guys when people are greedy in there when people are greedy in the crypto space I'm usually fearful and then when people are fearful I'm usually greedy so uh, right now there's a lot of greed going on in the market uh, we did just reject off of uh 89,000. I'm going to pull up the chart for you guys right now. Let's check it out over here on CoinMarketCap. As you guys can see, we are on CoinMarketCap, our entire cryptocurrency market cap coming in at 8.9 or at 2.7. I'm sorry, it's up 8.9% today. It's coming at $2.7 trillion, up 8.9%. Again, that's up very significantly. Our fear greed index is just absolutely through the chart. This is what I'm really concerned about. 87 on the fear greed index is definitely something to be cautious of. Um, you guys can see what has happened in the past. And this is what I've been talking about, right? Every time that we've entered this extreme greed area right here, right? Our RSI is too high. And this is what I said happened back in March. I was like, man, our RSI is too high. We're way overbought on our RSI. And, and it's obvious, dude, we're up like 30% in the past seven days. I wanted to see a good run up. I did want to see a parabolic run up. But I didn't want to see um, it spiked the fear greed index this much because again, this, the amount of money that's just coming into this, into, uh, Bitcoin right now, it's just, it's just a little bit too much. It's just something that I'd be paying attention to because again, look, every time that we enter this extreme greed, right, we've seen the market turn around and see a correction. And I did predict a hundred thousand dollar Bitcoin before inauguration, um, I'm still hoping that that is the case. Again, we're just seeing a little bit of consolidation. I'm going to pull up Bitcoin again. And nobody, also, this is another thing, guys. Nobody can predict the top. But I just want to to show you guys, one, that, and then two, look at this. We're creating this rising wedge right here, and we just rejected off of 80, off of 89. I told you guys that 88 was going to be a big psychological barrier. And um, it seems like we didn't possibly, we possibly rejected off of it. Again, I'm paying attention to see um, where we start closing some of these more smaller hour candles um, because we want to see Bitcoin continue um, in an uptrend, right? The one day definitely looking a little bit concerning. Seven day not looking as bad, right? Still looking like it can still turn up, but again, shoulder head, shoulder, shoulder possibly, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Our all time on our fear greed index, by the way, guys, was a 92. That's the highest we've ever gotten in right now. We're at 87 and we just rejected off of 89. Again, I'm not trying to fear you out of your bags. I'm not trying to get you to sell your stuff or anything like that. I'm just letting you know that we might see a little bit of volatility very soon. I do talk about all the time the fact that uh, fake outs happen early in the week. And we just seen Bitcoin pump in the past 24 hours. It was pumped um, like 8%. So uh, you start to see now possibly a little bit of cool down from Bitcoin. This thing looking like it wants to even retest some lower levels, which is good. I do think that that would be good. You know, just because we are breaking down a little bit doesn't mean we can't catch some support. I would like to see Bitcoin, um, you know, create some stronger levels of support up here in this range. That would be great. But again, just the fact that, you know, on our uh, one year chart, we've just been going parabolic. This thing could, you know, you know, I don't know. Maybe we reject off of this and uh, we need to, again, create some lower levels of support before we can continue on to these higher highs. Uh, up seven in the past seven days, again, up 30%, guys. Bitcoin's market cap sitting at a 1.75 trillion and it's up 30% in the past seven days. Like, what the, what? That's crazy. That's just too much. It's just too much money. Um, and again, guys, these whales, even though they get into the into the game, they cause so much euphoria because again, we're thinking, oh, big institutions getting involved. People are buying up Bitcoin, da da da. Again, we pay. I pay attention personally to long-term indicators, and I'm not telling you guys what to do. Again, I'm not trying to fear you out of your bags at all. 
I'm just bringing you awareness to things that people are not telling you about because everybody else is just telling you everything's going to $50. Like Dogecoin is going to $50. You know, GB News going to $100. And like, they'll just tell you that kind of stuff. But I'm not going to tell you that. I'm just going to tell you the truth. I'm be like, look, bro, Bill Green Index, every time we've done this, it's been like kind of sketch. It's a sketchy time to be in the market. And I have people even tell me like, dude, I, I've been out of crypto for so long. And you know what I'm saying? I, I just got in today because I'm like, man, things are just popping. Like, I'm just like, okay, you learned, you learned nothing, bro. You learned nothing. You learned nothing. So uh, again, guys, I'm looking for dips on certain things. I'm definitely waiting um, for a dip on Bitcoin. It's looking like I'm expecting this thing to, to dip. Guys, it's only... It's only November 11th. This is crazy. I was expecting again. I, I said 100K Bitcoin was insanely bullish um, in my last video. And uh, as you guys could see, we're almost at 90K. That's like crazy. It doesn't, it's just, I feel like we're going to see a correction. What do you guys think though? Do you guys think that we keep running or do you guys think that we're going to see a correction? I definitely want to know. Solana is taking a little bit of a dip also right now. The rest of the market is pretty much going to be, you know, in pretty much moving with Bitcoin, right? Still still in limbo, right? Bitcoin hasn't fully broken down yet, so things are not fully breaking down. But the market's slowly, you know, starting to feel the impacts of the price volatility that Bitcoin is seeing right now. So I uh, definitely want to know what your guys' price predictions are for a lot of these coins let me know in the comments below. And again, what what do you think about Bitcoin? But uh, I want to talk about some of these meme coins, guys, because meme coins are popping right now and you guys are looking at meme coins and you want to know what's good with meme coins. But again, I always have to talk about Bitcoin because it's kind of like musical chairs. You know, when Bitcoin is, is the music's playing and Bitcoin's pumping, it's a party, everything's good. But once that party stops, you know, if you're in some of these smaller meme coins, you gonna fall on your butt. So, um yeah, just pay attention to that because some of these coins, especially if you're trading into highly volatile coins with like a super micro cap market, um, I do think that this, you know, correction that Bitcoin it will see eventually because it'll correct. It's not going to stay parabolic forever. So all this feeling of FOMO and all this stuff that you're feeling for all these coins, don't worry, guys. No, don't worry. That's a fool's feeling. Just so you know that 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 FOMO feeling that you're feeling, that euphoria that you're feeling is a dangerous feeling. And trading, you don't want to be emotional. Some of y'all, a little emotional. Get emotional, man. I understand. I'm an emotional trader, too. I'm like, I'm looking at some of my trades right now, and I'm like, mm. But then at the same time, it's like, you know, I took this trade, so I'm going to use my fundamentals, and I'm going to see what's happened, see how this stuff uh, plays out. But a lot of these coins, too, we've talked about on the channel, even earlier in the day, earlier this week, even peanut is one coin that we've been seeing absolutely go parabolic this coin is up today like 230 percent and it's a coin that i was just saying the other day that i was speculative of and look at it just going parabolic and guess why they listed on binance um, and binance now holding a good portion of this coin themselves and that's what i told you guys happens this is why i like to get coins off of dex tools because when you're able to find coins before they list on the exchanges Look who the top holders are of the coins. You know, this just listed on Binance. And look, Binance bought up 30% of the supply. Gate.io, 3%. You know, like MXC, 1%. That's why, again, I try to get on these coins. And if you're able to pick a winner, it can really blow up just like Peanut did. Some of you guys made amazing gains off of Peanut. And if you did, congratulations, man. Congratulations. Again, sometimes I'm speculative and maybe you're not. Maybe you like, man, I like that one. I like that little Peanut one. I keep seeing it trending. Jay tells me like, you know, when I see that thing trending a lot, like pay attention to the volume, pay attention to the chart, look for a good entry if I like it, you know, like if you were able to do that and you're able to catch it, man, good on you. I ain't old no peanut, but maybe this thing does hit a billion market cap. Again, it just did get like that Binance listing. I am paid attention to this 15 minute chart though. If I'm in a uh, play like peanut, you can see it's kissing this upper level of this Kettner channel. And that's something that I would be paying attention to. Also 30 minute chart, touching that top level. Peanuts didn't have some. Pretty key resistance right now. Look, nice cup and handle platter playing out right here, though. This thing looks like it might have another leg in it. And I have another leg in it. It's looking like a Bitcoin wants to pump. Peanut is going to be stretching. You know, this is a coin also that Elon was talking about, too. So, I don't know. Maybe it'll do well. Maybe we create a McDonald's M here. I don't know what's going to happen, bro. What do you guys think? What are your price predictions of Peanut? I definitely want to know. Let me know in the comment section below. Uh, let's look at some of these other coins that are trending right now. 
trying to see what's trending. Man, interesting, interesting. I'm I'm curious to see what kind of volatility we're going to see. Happy Cat. So, all right. Somebody asked me about Happy Cat in the, in the Telegram. They asked it to me earlier today. The price was like around here. And I was seeing that it was making this comeback. And I was saying, I think that there's a decent chance that this coin would have a comeback just because um, I feel like with Dogecoin pumping and shit pumping and all those dog coins pumping, I do think that maybe we could start seeing some cats, some of these cats pumping too, like this narrative of these cats pumping, like uh, Mew's, Mew and Mog uh, and you know Happy Cat is sitting at like 112 million now. Duco is another coin that was pumping. Like, are we starting to see like a narrative of like cat coins right now? Like, is that what we're starting to see? I wouldn't be surprised, right? Like people looked for SHIB. They were looking for that, you know, then they were looking for the next big dog coin. Maybe people are looking for cat coins now. You know, Duco is coming in at a 19 million market cap. And we were so insanely early even talking about this project because again, this is a project that has just been trending, guys. We talk about coins that trend on this channel all the time. You guys can see Duco has had some highs in the past. Can it see some significant upside again? Only time will tell. You know, only time will tell. These things are highly volatile. That is one thing that we always talk about. And we always have to be doing our research too, right? You want to check these holders. You want to see uh, who's listing this project. You want to see, are they on Twitter? Do they have a social media account? You can see these guys are up 36% today. They're having a good day. Um, it says, I'm bullish on Duco even right now. It's very impressive. First centralized exchange for 15 million market cap. Okay, so they got their first listing, it looks like. Um, that's interesting. Let's see where they listed on. Oh, wow. They, it's not their first listing. They have they have a decent amount of listings. So uh, we could check which ones they have. We can organize it through centralized exchanges or decentralized over here on CoinMarketCap. So let's see all the centralized exchanges that they're on, right? Because this is where retail shops, retail doesn't really know how to use centralized exchange. They kind of dumb, sorry. Um, but yeah, they don't know how to use a decentralized exchange yet. Um, but you guys can see over here, they're on a decent amount of centralized exchanges, including Gate.io. Gate.io is a pretty good size. Um, it gets good. Uh, MXC is decent, yeah. Bitmart, not a fan. I will forever not be a fan of Bitmart, forever. Forever, ever. I don't like Bitmart anymore after I lost money. Because they said they said they were going to list a coin, and then they didn't list it. How are you going to say you're going to list a coin, and then not list it, and the coin goes to down 75%? Like, what? And then, like, what the? Like, I don't know. To me, it's like, I checked the audit on that thing. I thought it was legit. I saw, I bet those audits are automated, too. And then, you know, I saw that they were going to be listing, and there was, like, three different exchanges that announced that. Um, they were going to be listing this coin and only to find out that the coin didn't list. So whenever now, whenever I see a coin that says listing soon, I'm going to be like, all right, bro, we'll see. <laughs> like, we'll see. Unless it's like Binance or somebody saying, I'm like, all right, we'll see, bro. Because I ain't trusting that no more. That's uh, It's like the Wild West, man. It really is. It's cryptocurrency. And I do think like with that happening that we're going to start seeing some crazy stuff. Even like Pachita also is another coin. That like this coin listed on like a lot of exchanges, and I even think it's still listed on a lot of exchanges. And then like the price action that it just saw, it just made no sense. Like, look now the price is like recovering, which is really like six million market cap though. Look at this thing. Look where the price was at, and look how much it's fell. And then look at the recovery that's making. It. And look, it's like. This thing started up here and then they list on these exchanges and then the, the liquidity just go, it goes down like it went down like 90 percent and then now you're seeing this thing pump and then they're they're taking money out again i just i don't understand what's going on with this thing i don't know if they delisted this off of those exchanges that it was on i don't know if it's still listed um i don't think it's very normal for a coin to do this though look at this you could see it's still listed on mxc it's listed on l bank it's listed on coinx this is why I'm saying it's the Wild West, man. You really got to be careful. Even Poloniex listed this hour bit. Like all these coins, you could see um, they don't have very much 24-hour volume trading on this on this coin, though. But um, again, just be cautious of the, that kind of stuff. And um, I'm paying attention to that at least. Uh, Fog's another coin that this man, this thing. I can't believe this thing is already at 564 million dude this is another coin that 
Like, we watched 100x, more than 100x, man. We caught Flog at like 5 million or something like that. Back in August, bro, yeah. We were covering this when things were boring back in August, price around like 52. And I was saying like, hey, these coins are trending. We watch Flog uh, trend a lot. Let's see how they've grown over here on Twitter also. I like to check out the Twitter. Oh, account spended. What happened? They violated the rules. I don't know what happened there. That's concerning. Uh, let's check out the holder count. Again, this is why we do this though, guys. We wanna know. We wanna know. Okay, so the the top wallet is a, the creator account, right? Whenever you see this little hammer, it says token creator, pump.fun. Means that this token was created on pump.fun and this is the token creator. This is him. So um one thing I like about this is you could see every time he's moved money. So hmm, interesting. This is him, but then also he moved money in here. He had money moved into that wallet. Let's see if he did it again. He did it again. Right here. Let's see if he did it again. He does do it again. He did it right here. And right here. Interesting. This one's a dot saw wallet. See how nosy I am? Oh, did I find your wallet, bro? Are you the guy, bro? Are you the guy? What the? Uh... Oh man, you got a lot of fog, got a lot of popcat. Oh, popcat's another another cat coin that might do well. I want to check out popcat. See what's going on with that. I'm checking on popcat in a minute. I think it was close to a billion dollars. Dude, my, I told you guys, my boy told me about PopCat. That thing was sitting at like $2 million. This is another little strategy. Maybe you might want to implement, like, go check out people's wallets and, you know, some of these people that have these big accounts and see what coins they're buying. And then, go, again, go do your research. I'm not telling you just go buy it because they bought it. But, again, this guy could be running a scam, too. So, it, it does look like he might possibly, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, right? We're just kind of looking at what's going on, but I don't. I don't think he has enough again to do anything to the fraud to flog. Um, but it, this is the token holder. This is the creator of the coin, actually. So maybe he does. Maybe he does have that kind of power. I don't know. Like five hundred, like five hundred million though. Like that's crazy. But yeah, you could see he is doing stuff in the contract. I look at this stuff, guys. I'm telling you, and it it's important to look at this stuff. You could see every time he's moved money. I know every time he's moving money, moving money here too. He's just moving it, moving it, moving it, moving it. What is this little clock? This thing got a million dollars in it, like it's nothing. And then look, some of these other ones, like they all hold like 0.19. Like I'd be even concerned about that. Like why do these hold like, this is like a lot of bot action going on here. But this is not a bot though, cause look, only 200, 291 transactions. I'm not too concerned about that. It's the walls to be having like 70,000 transactions. Those are the ones I'm like, oh Lord, what we got going on? You know, but you got to do that, bro. In my opinion, you got to, you got to do that because again, these exchanges are even listing some of the stuff it's getting by them and it's a problem. So, um, that's all stuff that I do. And you could also determine who is bots just by here. You could see these guys have had a lot of buy sells. You could see their P and L, right? Their profit and loss. You can see their unrealized gains, which is how much they still have left over. You can even scroll down to the bottom. You can see how many trades have been going through. So you really don't even have to pull up the contract. I like to pull up the contract because I like to know what's going on. But you could even check the holder count right here too. But again, we wouldn't have known um, that token holder that was moving that around unless we would have opened the contract, right? So again, open the contract and do your research. Don't be lazy, guys. Don't be lazy. Lazy gets you wrecked. Lazy gets you wrecked. And the time to get wrecked, guys, is not right now. I'll tell you that right now. The time to be greedy and get wrecked is not this early in the uh, bull cycle. And that's why, again, I'm letting you guys know about, uh, you know, just things to pay attention to. Like uh, this rising wedge forming on Bitcoin and the fear read index. And the fact that we're breaking down right now. I'm concerned about this, actually. But, uh, again, I don't, I'm not saying that Bitcoin is going to go down and significantly, but... I'm hoping that we do uh hoping that we see a little bit of sell off before we start heading higher. Look at that. We're retesting some lower ranges, right? 87. 
Look, you see the sell off? That's what I'm talking about. We created this wedge, and I told you guys we we're going to probably see something here. Um, only time will tell, though, guys. Only time will tell. What do you guys think? You guys think that Bitcoin needs to see some significant correction? Look at this shoulder, head, shoulder. I'm paying attention to this, bro. Paying attention to this. I actually want to look at Fartcoin because I'm holding it. And uh, it's, it was already volatile before this. But now I think it's going to see some more volatility. Huh. Trade in real time, bro. See, look, this is what I'm concerned about on this chart, this shoulder head shoulder. And then this bear flag, this thing's already breaking down under some support. And it just went on a big parabolic run recently. You could see though, it's oversold right now. I think a little bit. I think that it can hopefully hold, but again, it's not looking. Ah, uh, no. See that rising wedge? I told you guys that rising wedge. It's breaking down. And then look, you could see when I had the Keltner channel open, how the rising wedge broke down and we broke under this level. And then we created this bear flag, right? This little Nike check. I always tell you guys, Nike check means don't do it. You can see we touched here and then we dropped down, right? And now we're creating another one. I'm concerned about it, man. Dang it. Oh, look at the past five minutes. Just looking rough on me. But hey, is what it is. We do talk about the fact again, guys, that fakeouts happen usually early in the week. But anything can happen in cryptocurrency. So yeah, guys, what do you guys think? I definitely want to know your uh, what coins that you guys are shopping for. Look at Duco again, man, up 41% Duco. Interesting. You guys think Duco will do well? You guys think these cat coins will have a chance at uh, doing well? Or do you guys think that... Uh, we're in trouble with Bitcoin and that we might need to see some lows a little bit, a little bit of retest. But again, guys, I'm not saying that I do think that that's going to happen. I do think that, uh, you know, if Bitcoin does decide to go down a little bit, that it will just be a little hiccup. I think it's necessary. I actually hope that it happens, to be honest with you guys. I don't uh, want to see Bitcoin having this unhealthy price action because... It's just not sustainable growth. And that's what I was saying back in March when our RSI was up like 50%. That, uh, you know, Bitcoin's up 50% on the month. This is insane. I said that back in March, guys. This was March. We were in this extreme fear. Here we are again. Extreme fear. Right? And uh, this time we're up 30% in the past seven days. Instead of being up 50% in the past month, we're up 30% in the past seven days. So, again, guys. Markets don't stay parabolic forever. They need to cool off. And that's why I tell you guys, don't don't feel the FOMO because the price don't go up forever. They come back down and the price moves, consolidates before it runs up, you know. So we'll see what happens again, guys. What are your price predictions for Bitcoin? I said that I do think that Bitcoin can uh, still hit um, 100,000 before... Well, I said 100,000 by the inauguration before, by the time Trump takes office. Again, it's only November 11th. It was just, just like six days ago was the 5th. I can't believe that Bitcoin's already sitting this high right now. It's just too much uh, manipulation going on. I feel like it's a, little, it's a manipulation. It's some FOMO too. It's, uh, it's a lot of things. But in my opinion, again, guys, I just go off of the trends. I just go off of the facts and look at this rising wedge right here shoulder head shoulder right here and it's monday so there's a possibility that we do see some sell off it's a possibility anything can happen though guys definitely again want to know what you guys think i'm going to keep making these videos guys so um let me know what coins you want to see in the next one and i will catch you guys in the next one oh also if you're not yet following me on tiktok guys i'm trying to get my tiktok to a thousand people so that i can go live over there if you guys want me to go live more if you want me to like do more like interactive stuff so you can ask questions and like get answers and stuff follow me over there so that i can hit a thousand and then i can go live and then i'll uh you know add all you guys that follow me on tiktok actually you guys can come trade in my uh private telegram so anybody that's following me on tiktok will also receive a telegram invite 
And I'm capping out the Telegram at 5,000 members, guys. Not going to get too crazy in this bull cycle. I've had that thing um, fill up. I filled up Telegrams before in the past, and they've gotten big and crazy. And I just had to be like, you know what, guys? I can't do this anymore. <laughs> you know, so I'm trying to keep it quality. Um, we have a lot of really talented traders in there. Again, it's not a place where we're over there sitting, pumping projects and stuff like that. It's more just a place where, you know, you could connect with like-minded individuals and we just mostly talk about cryptocurrency and trends and things that are going on. But again, it's not a place for financial advice, guys. So don't show up there with your wallet saying, you told me to buy this because guys, that kind of crap, um, doesn't, uh, nobody wants to hear that crap. <laughs> so anyway, guys understand the risk. It's a risk. This is not financial advice. And, um, don't come crying to me. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.